The Lady Tigers come off of another state appearance in Emporia last year, although it ended a little earlier than expected in that overtime opening round loss. Now the quest to return to Emporia begins tonight on the road. The Lady Tigers take on the Rock Creek Mustangs. Lady Tiger pregame is here. It's being brought to you tonight by RW Pest Control. The Lady Tigers at Rock Creek. Our pregame talk with Coach Jeff Edwards on the way next on Lady Tiger pregame. Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to your financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Carrie Spillman. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Stop by our office at 701 4th Street for a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. We've moved. Stop by and visit me, your local Farm Bureau agent, Justin Tadman, at the new Farm Bureau Financial Services location in Clay Center. Our location has changed, but you can still count on the same great service you've come to expect from us. To learn more about how we make it simple to protect what's most important to you, your family, home, car, and future, stop by our office at 535 Court Street in Clay Center today. Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Farm Bureau Property and Casualty Insurance Company. Back on Lady Tiger pregame and joined now by the head coach of the Lady Tigers, Jeff Edwards, as we get set to open up the season. Coach, as always, appreciate the time and welcome back once again, coming off of another trip into Emporia last year. I know it ended earlier than everyone was wanting in that overtime uh, ball game uh, at Emporia. Now you come back with uh, some familiar faces and some new faces on the floor. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun year to see these, these uh, gals kind of get uh, to know each other and, and get rolling. Yeah, it should be a great year. We've got uh, we've got some new players um, in new new places. Um, we've got uh, four girls, actually five girls coming back that have seen the floor quite a bit. Um, but we're, we're shifting some from off guards to point guards, and and uh, like Sid Callaway has played a lot of guard and a little bit of post. She may play a lot of post and a little bit of guard now. Um, and then we've got uh, you know um, my daughter Clara Edwards coming in at. As, and she's been around the program and been running this stuff since fifth grade, so a lot is familiar. Um, Lexi Leiby and Jaden Crimmins have uh, have been doing a lot of work here as as sophomores, and, and they may come in and help us out a little bit. And we have a few of the freshmen as well, Maddie Craig and, and Reagan Henry, that have uh, started stepping up, and, and it's really helped them because um, I, I started coaching them about four years ago, and so um, – they haven't had that learning curve, so to speak, as to what's going on in practice. So I'm excited that there's, you know, the possibility of, of you know, 10 or 11 players that can step on the floor and, and absolutely know what's going on at the beginning of the year. Well, in a team that, as, as we know, wants to get up and down the floor, and, and maybe more so than, than we have, uh, you've got certainly the size with Hannah Ferguson back as a senior. You mentioned Sid Calloway going down in the post. Clara's got good size for you as well, but you've got some athletes that, that can get out and move. We, we definitely do. You know, we've got, you know, Hannah's going to draw a lot of attention, which, uh, you know, we, we kind of play off that attention, skip pass, and try to drive with some of our guards. Um, Haley Franson's been doing great. Erin Hamill's been uh, been doing great as well. She she can knock down some shots outside, and so can Haley. And and uh, you know, um, Addie Mullen's one of the quicker guards in the state, especially going to her left side with her being a lefty. And so we've got a lot of really really good uh, you know keys to the to uh, to the team part of it, and and we can mix in a lot of different things and. And I can say with everyone, um, we have almost the entire year's worth of offense put in, and, and we're only two and a half weeks into the season. So that feels pretty good as a coach, knowing that you know they're, they're smart kids and, and uh, they've experienced this stuff before, and we've got five or six different offensive sets that we can run at any moment. So that's good. You know, last year I heard you say on several occasions that uh, the team could pretty much practice itself because they work so hard. I get the feeling this group is – is just continuing that trend. Yeah, and that's that, you know that's part of having a system and and you know building a system and getting everyone to buy into the system is the hard part. But now that you've kind of established your, I have established the system and and the kids kind of understand it. Um, you don't have to change any expectations or or what's going on, and and then you can kind of tweak and and add little wrinkles um, that that make it makes it really hard for 
opposing teams to scout you. So, so yeah, the, the system is 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 working out. It all kind of bases around our defense, and that's the main thing. If the other, if the opponent doesn't score, we're probably going to win. So. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about your matchup tonight against uh, Rock Creek, the Mustangs. You look at the record, and most people will, and see 5-16 and 16 and think, well, this is a no-brainer for the Lady Tigers. But as we talked before coming on the air, this team finished 500 in the second half of the season, nearly knocked off Holton in the sub-state semifinals, uh, and a much-improved team. And, and you said they've also done a lot of work in the offseason. They have, and, and you know, with social media and, and all that, you can kind of follow how a team's doing it. This was a team that was really young coming in, and I talked with one of the one of the girls, uh, Tabitha Vetter's dad. I had played some ball with Clara before, and and he was like, you know, our our goal is, you know, to compete with people and and get better as the season goes along, and that's exactly what they did. Um, coming into the summer, um, uh, they won some tournaments in the summer, and and I kept seeing posts about how how much they're improving. Uh, they got a longer longer lineup than we're used to from Rock Creek. They got a five nine guard, a five ten post, and a five eight kind of stronger post in there and then they got a couple of shooters in there so um definitely not something you want to look at the uh, at the record and just say you know they'll probably just lay down for us which is not going to happen at all this year well it's exciting to see the lady tigers uh, get this season rolling i know they're anxious to get on the floor and go and i know you're anxious as uh, as i think you put it to get the game under your belt and just see how you know you you put everything in you've got your offense in until you get live it's hard to know what a team is is really how they're going to respond. Exactly, and and I fully anticipate it being a little uh, a little muddy out there, just a little <laughs> bit. You know, where a lot of times when you start that first game, your your mind's going faster than your body, and your body's going faster than the ball, and <laughs> and uh, so there's extra turnovers, and there's you know there's a few hand checks and whatnot. That we'll we'll probably not have our hands on later in the season, but. You know the the referees are going to be setting the tone, and so that's our goal is to try to not uh, not be the ones that uh, are the examples that are set on us by putting our hands on the on the uh, on the opponent. So, um, but all in all, I know you know get halfway into the first quarter, we'll be settled in, and and things are going to be good. So. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we are too. Tipping off the season tonight at Rock Creek, coaches. Always appreciate your time. Let's go get them this evening. All right, thanks, Rocky. Back with more on Lady Tiger pregame in just a moment. Athletics have been a mainstay of the high school scene for decades. Although many students get involved in sports simply for the love of the game, there are great benefits from participating. Our young athletes learn the fun of team rivalries and revel in the satisfaction of the job well done for their school. This feeling of community and the honor of representing the home team gives them a sense of pride that they will carry with them well beyond high school. Here's to a great winter sports season, Tigers. From your fans of Clay County National Bank, member FDIC. Take action now for a successful crop next year. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, we're ready to help you plan for next season feed control, moisture conservation, and fertilizer needs. For your plan, we'll utilize soil testing and variable seed rates to come up with site-specific fertilizer and seed systems. Now's a good time to establish your fertilizer and chemical program for productive crops in 2018. It's flu season, and the flu shot is your best bet for avoiding the most common strains of the flu. Do what you can to protect yourself and others. Flu shots are available now at Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy. They make it incredibly convenient. All you need to do is walk in any day, Monday through Friday, during regular business hours and get your flu shot. No appointment necessary. They'll even bill your insurance. Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy in downtown Clay Center, Abilene, and Salina. As a third-generation seed company, Oldie Seed has pioneered the development of soil-specific hybrids that thrive in your soils. Our Know-to-Grow research program is the largest in the Midwest and utilizes advanced technologies including List, Extend, and Liberty Link soybeans. Oldie's research program delivers top yields while helping you win the war on resistant weeds. This season, don't settle for anything less than a soil-specific seed from Oldie Seed. And a welcome to a Friday night from Rock Creek High School, along with our studio engineer, Bernie Fancilla, Rocky Downing, alongside Larry Wonk-Wallace, as the Clay Center Lady Tigers get a chance to open up this December 1st, and the opening game of Lady Tiger basketball against the Rock Creek Mustangs. Already saw a JV game for the Lady Tigers that was a runaway. They ended up with a running clock in the fourth quarter, but that's why we're a little bit behind schedule 
as uh, the place of the Lady Tiger JV opened up with the win. Now the Lady Tigers coming off of a year that saw them go 20-3, and three, co-MCKO champs at 8-2, and two, lost in the opening round in Emporia, the state championships in that overtime matchup where it was tough to score the basketball, and now they come back to try to make their way back again to state in Emporia. And, uh, Larry, this is a team that has some faces that are very familiar, as Coach Jeff Edwards told us, some faces that we're going to get to know. Uh, we may know the families, but we're going to get to know them on the basketball floor now at the varsity level. A few freshmen are going to step in, and some players that will change some positions. But one thing we know, this program in his fourth year now for Coach Jeff Edwards, they had gone to state the year before he came. He's taken them back every year, won a state title two years ago. This program has a good trend going. Yeah, it sure does. And we were talking on the way over here how, uh, you know, Hannah – is going Hannah Ferguson is going to be uh, going into her second year. Right. Last year she was good, but she was new to town, had to kind of feel her way through and maybe a little tentative. And this year she's really became a leader for the team. So looking forward to watching her play this year. And then the coach's daughter, uh, Clara Edwards, should be uh, a lot of help to the Lady Tigers this year also. Two seniors on this team. You mentioned Hannah Ferguson. You throw in Sid Calloway, two players that were outstanding. I will say this. Hannah should be more comfortable because just more comfortable uh, being in the system. As Walk said, Sid Calloway may be the healthiest she's been her entire career. So I really think you can see some big things from both of those senior leaders. And then you throw in Haley Franson, who, of course, has seen the court since she was a freshman. Uh, Lexi Leiby is a sophomore that's on this team. Addie Mullen has seen the floor since she's a freshman. She's back as the point guard. Aaron Hamill saw a lot of varsity time last year. You mentioned Edwards. You throw in uh, Addie or uh, Maddie Craig and, and Reagan Henry, who will see some time. Uh, this is a team that's got some real depth. In fact, it could be a team that goes really, really deep if the uh, underclassmen can get into the flow of things, which Coach Edwards would love to see, I think. Oh, yeah. And, and these te- this team is dark. I mean, that's Coach Edwards' thing, you know. Last year, they had a little bit of trouble because they had lost Courtney Hamill and they lost uh, Caitlin Bonnenblatt. So they had a little trouble guarding inside. But they shouldn't have that much trouble that this year with Clara and Sydney kind of moving inside a little bit. And then and the, the people I always – two people always say I would never want to get guarded by, you know, and that's Sydney and Addie. <laughs> They're quick as grease. They're like pests out there, aren't they? Yeah, they, without a doubt. Now, for Rock Creek, a team that went just 5-16 and 16 last year, but you understand pregame, they were 5-5 five and five in the second half of the season, so they figured some things out, had a great offseason, working to get better. They'll start with 5-7 sophomore Tabitha Better. Laney Scott is a 5-9 junior. Demi Kunkel, a 5-4 senior. Abby Reuter, a 5-10 junior. And Allie Jensen, a 5-8 junior. But the place of the Lady Tigers, they'll start like this. 5-6 junior Haley Franson, along with 6-1 senior Anna Ferguson, 5'4 and a junior, Addie Mullen. Sid Calloway, the uh, second of the two seniors on this team at 5'8. And Aaron Hamill, a 5'8 junior. Hamill, number 33. Calloway, number 32. Mullen, 23. Ferguson, number 21. And Franson wears number 11. So there's a starting five again for Rock Creek. Better, Scott, Kunkel, Reuter, and Jensen. For the Lady Tigers, it is Franson, Ferguson, Mullen, Calloway, and Hamill. Good crowd on hand for both teams here tonight as well as we get well, to Oh, yeah. Oh, nice, nice travel because. We are talking about that last year. We were here, it was like 20 degrees and 25 mile an hour west, and tonight it was 50 and calm. So it was like a lot nicer walking into the building. Much more pleasant, indeed, walking from uh, the car to uh, the Rock Creek High School. But they've done some renovations. If you haven't been here in a while, there the space behind the bleachers, the main bleachers in the scores table, used to be a weight bench area. That's now been cleared out, and they've extended the seats and put new bleachers in. To give you a little picture of what it looks like here at Rock Creek. Opening tip-off set to go. Hannah Ferguson in the center circle, and she'll win the tip, getting it back to Callaway. And the Lady Tigers open up with the basketball, and we'll see what Rock Creek goes in man-to-man to start. They were manned up, did not even really try for a chance to get the basketball on the tip. Here's Franson in the corner for three early. It is just rimming short and then long off the bounce and rebounded on the weak side by Allie Jensen. Rock Creek with the basketball. Scott brings it across a 5'9 junior, not real big, Rock Creek, but they do have a 5'9", five, 5'10", five, a guard and a post that can go kind of inside and outside. There's a jumper in the lane, up and good by Better, and it is Rock Creek with the early lead here, 2 nothing. So Clay Center got a quick three-point look open that just ripped off, and on the other end, Rock Creek runs good offense, finds a shot down inside, and Better puts it down. Here's 
Ferguson at the high post out near the three-point line. She'll move it right to Hamill. Aaron backs it out and now loses it off her foot. It's going to be picked up down court quickly. Comes Rock Creek trying to run it out. And a traveling violation gives it right back to play center. It was Demi Kunkel who got out in the break off the pass down court after Clay Center had turned it over, and so both teams a little bit hectic. You could expect that on opening night. Oh, yeah. Addie Mullen brings it across, crosses over. She works against Kunkel. Now to the high post is Callaway. Squares it up, still beyond the arc, looking low. Back door goes on the back side. The Hamill step back three is just short. Rebound comes off on the weak side into the hands of Abby Reuter, and now we've got a foul on Hannah Ferguson trying to pressure down court after the defensive rebound was pulled away. And she quickly nodded to the sideline as if to say, yes, I, no, I can't be getting fouls down in this situation. No, they can ill afford to have her uh, sit on the bench while she said the leader and the post player. 640 remains opening quarter. It is Rock Creek with a basketball and a 2 nothing lead. Now the ball taken away by Addie Mullen. Play center trying to push it. Mullen left side. Ferguson gets the screen. Mullen to the baseline, to the block. Now backs it out with a dribble into the corner and lobs it outside to Hamill. Top of the key is... Branson, Haley will hold there, back it out and start the offense with a weak pass right to Hamill. High post, Callaway, Sid, kicks it left. Here's Mullen all the way to the rack, and she's fouled, and Addie Mullen's headed to the free throws drive. So good offensive set that time in the half court for Clay Center as they got it high post. Had it sealed with the low post Ferguson. Callaway then gave it to Mullen, who drove it left side and got contact on the shot, and she's headed to the free throw line. Addie had 11 points against Rock Creek last year. And remember, maybe the Lady Tigers jumped out to a 27-point lead, I think it was, at the end of one quarter, and it was never close in that ball game last season. Rock Creek with the early 2 nothing lead. Mullen missing on the first free throw. Ferguson comes out, and freshman Clara Edwards, her first varsity look on the floor. As Mullen's second free throw rims strong, and they actually said she stepped across the line, so... Mullen over to at the strike place and her trails by a bucket to zero. Up the floor with it is Laney Scott for Rock Creek. Lady Tigers defensively in a man to man and they'll force a turnover. It was thrown away. Callaway sealed the passing lane. They tried to throw outside of her and did, but in doing so threw it away. That was that was a combination of Addie and Sydney. Like a seven foot game. The one get guarded by those two. Callaway with such length and quick, and then uh, maybe one of the quickest guards in the state in Addie Mullen. Those two can really defend it. Here's Edwards. Makes right, goes left, all the way to the lane. And the freshman with her first bucket were tied at two. Edwards faked it right, took it with the offhand, and scored it through traffic. The Lady Tigers tie it up, and now right back the other way comes Rock Creek. Better with the bucket. She's got four early points. It's four to two. Rock Creek with the lead. That one from outside. The first bucket came on a... Set that got them down in the lane. Here's Callaway. Squares it up on the right wing beyond arc, looking low. Backside it goes across on a skip to Hamill. Now in the post, Edwards goes strong. This one rims out, gets her own rebound. Kick out, Mullen. Three ball on the way. Yes! The Tasmanian Devils' first three of the game and the first triple for the Lady Tigers. They lead it by 1 5 to 4. Time out on the floor. You're listening to Lady Tiger basketball on 100.9. With United Bank and Trust Online Banking, you have access to your hometown bank 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year at ubankonline.com. You can view account balances, access statements, and transfer money between your UBT accounts. You can also view account activity, pay bills, and even make loan payments without being limited by banking hours. Simply visit ubankonline.com to learn more. Online banking with United Bank and Trust. It's banking for your way of life. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 5-4 5-4 ball game. Lady Tigers with a one-point lead now. They trail 2-0, 4-2. And uh, the freshman comes in and really gets the lid off the bucket. The drive and the left-hand kiss off the glass. And then a kick out to Addie Mullen, who knocks down the year's first three-pointer. And plays it her like that has a one-point lead. Yeah, like I said, she's been there for 30 seconds. She's got a bucket, an assist, and a rebound. And Rock Creek with a timeout. Clay Center comes out man-to-man full-court pressure. Lob down the floor. Tip away by Callaway. Sid with it on the right wing. At the top is Branson, Haley, to the wing right. Callaway trying to feed it in low. Instead, skips it across Mullen to the rack again. This time it's left short. May have been blocked. Out of bounds to Rock Creek. They say Clay Center touched it last after it rattled around in the lane. I really thought she got her arm hit on that. On Mullen's drive, I would agree, on that left side. She did get fouled the first time she took it in. This time they called it clean. 
Rock Creek against the full court pressure. They turned it over last time. Now they get it down the floor. We've got a blocking foul against Play Center on the drive by Scott. It will be Rock Creek's basketball on the baseline right of the window. 5-4, Clay Center by one, 457 the word first quarter. From the baseline is Tabitha Vetter. She brings it into Scott. Ball fake, dribble drive. Now leans into a defender, can't get the shot down, rebound away to Callaway. Out with pass for Mullen, who slows it down now to set the half court offense. Mullen at the between the circles right now with the dribble outside against the man to man of Rock Creek. Left and deep Cranston. To the post, Callaway, back to the bucket. Now pressured from behind and fouled across the arm. The double team came down from the wing on the outside on top of Callaway, and she came across the arm. The basketball belongs to Clay Center on the baseline. 4.37 to work, opening quarter, 5-4, Clay Center by one. The foul is called on better. It's her first. Two team fouls apiece now. Mullen lobs it out deep. Looking for Edwards actually ends up in the hands of Haley Franson. Franson right side wing and deep to Hamill. Screen coming from Callaway to the post. Edwards, ball fake, steps through, takes it strong. No contact, but Callaway there to clean it up. She'll be fouled and will step to the free throw line to shoot two. So Sid Callaway, good attack on the glass that time off the miss by Edwards, who went through contact, no whistle, but there was Callaway to pick it up, and she's got two free throws coming. Clay Center 0 of 2 from the stripe thus far. And Callaway drains this one. The senior with her first point. Play center with a two-point lead, 6-4. to four. 426 remains, first period. First charity in, second one perfect as well. Hey, the net stance on those two free throws did Callaway. Senior with two. Play center has a three-point lead. Back in is Hannah Ferguson. Franson will get a breather. Full court pressure again by Clay Center. Trying to get this tempo in a, a more hectic pace. Early on, Mullen pressuring in the backcourt. The beam Kunkel brings it across. Skip pass nearly threw it away. It's gathered in, then walking with it is Megan Prockish, and Play Center does force the turnover. Don't get the steal, but they force the tempo, and they get the turnover. Sydney, I got I to gotta come up with a good duo nickname for those <laughs> two. So you can help me or get that. They are the uh, dynamic duo, that's for sure. Tasmanian Devil Eddie Mullen, the sidewalk surfer, Sid Calloway. Tag team in on the defense. Here's Callaway in the corner left. Out deep it comes to Ferguson. Back right to Hamill. Off a screen by Ferguson around to Edwards. Clara, right side wing and deep. Mullen. Addy puts the dribble down to the lane. Kicks it to the corner left. Here's Callaway. Two-pointer on the way. Just across the line. And she drills it. Four quick points now for Callaway. And it's 9-4. to four. Clay center by five. 340 to work first quarter. Dribble drive all the way to the paint. Better couldn't get it down. Had an open look. And now Ferguson brings down the defensive board and is fouled by Rock Creek. And the Mustangs really give up a golden opportunity with the runout. Instead, the miss and a rebound to Ferguson and a foul against Rock Creek. They're better. Really, team's fourth. Yeah, better is really the only offense that, that uh, seen from, we've seen from Rock Creek. Yeah, she had the dribble drive earlier off the uh, pass on a cut and then uh, the pull up jumper from 15th. All four points thus far for Rock Creek. Mullen with the dribble into the front court, guarded by Kunkel. She works it right now back left to Callaway with the 18-footer last time down, just inside the three-point arc. Hamill out deep, Edwards, one dribble, and now looks down low for Ferguson, just off her hand, able to chase it down, and then she's fouled again by Rock Creek. Now their fifth team foul in this first quarter. And the basketball to the baseline for Clay Center with a 9-4 to lead as Franson will check back in. Also, Madison Figgy comes on for Rock Creek. 9-4 ball game. Mullen will inbound. Looks into the post. Edwards wide open look for two. She's got four. And Clay Center all of a sudden now a seven-point lead, 11-4, to four, after they had trailed 4-2. to two. So they've gone on a 9-0 run. Backing out with a basketball. Mullen nearly pushing a five count. Finally, it is Scott getting rid of it. Now out deep it comes. To Abby Reuter, around right. Three-point attempt is left short and out of bounds to Clay Center. Three-point try on the right wing, left short. Better kind of pulled the trigger on it. And Clay Center with an 11-score lead has the basketball back. 251 remaining here in this first period. Addie Mullen will walk it up the floor. And they've gone to a zone now, Rock Creek, after the man-to-man kind of got burnt, or at least a sagging man at best. Mullen to the post. Ferguson turns, spins, goes strong, through contact, bucket good, chance at a three-point play for the senior, Anna Ferguson, as Clay Center now with a 
nine-point lead and a chance here to strike. Ferguson that time really went through two defenders, kind of got the post pass inside, back to the bucket, squared it up, and then took a little ball fake, hard drop step to the right, took it strong through the contact and at the line for a chance at an old-fashioned three, strong on the free throw. But two points now for Ferguson, and Clay Center leads at 13-4. Two and a half to work, we're in the opening quarter. Clay Center with a nine-point lead. Corner left is Figgy, two-pointer, no good. Good box out by Franson, and then she lets it go out of bounds. Clay Center has possession back. Been a good last minute for the Lady Tigers. We were up 5-4, and now you blink, and they're up 13-4. 221 remaining first quarter. With the basketball, Mullen brings it across the center circle. Left and deep, Callaway. 2-3 zone now by Rock Creek. They started man-to-man, gave Clay Center some problems, and then they started to torch the man-to-man defense. And so Rock Creek's gone 2-3. Ferguson, right wing and deep. Mullen takes it in low, skips it again to Callaway, to the post, looking for Ferguson, just off her hands, picked up, though, by Edwards, and she'll get to the free throw line as she's hammered inside. Clara Edwards, the freshman, with four points already, and now a chance at the strike to shoot two. Something that uh, Clay Center had a chance to watch some of their practice, and against the zone, they really love the skip pass and then what they can do off of that, because while the defense is in transition, you can make some big things happen. And they did there. Got it on the hands of Hannah Ferguson, and it just came off. You couldn't quite secure it, but Edwards there to clean it up, drawing the foul and then making the free throw. It's 14-4, to and Edwards now with five points. I've been real impressed with Clara so far. Is Hallows are doing it all, rebounding, assist, scoring the ball. It is strong on the second free throw. 14-4, though, Clay Center's opened up a double-digit lead. And after Rock Creek had a 4-2 advantage, now another steal. Ferguson, great pickup. She had Callaway racing down the floor, but was fouled before she could get rid of the basketball. And Clay Center will have it back, and now at the free throw line, already in the bonus. That's the seventh team foul against Rock Creek. It's the second on correction. Jensen call for this foul, her first. Listeners in the middle of a 12 0 run here. Hopefully, we can make it a 20 or something. <laughs> yeah, really. They've oh, uh, got it working right now. About the last four minutes, Rock Creek has been unable to score the basketball. If you're talking football, field position has been really good for Clay Center. Ferguson misses. Great save on a hustle play by Aaron Hamill. Unable to save it, though, to a teammate. And Rock Creek has the basketball. Clay Center's lead is 10. Ball nearly taken away now by Mullen. Hamill in the mix. It's going to be a jump ball arrow that belongs to Rock Creek with a minute 35 left to go in this opening period. 14-4, Clay Center by 10. Rock Creek wants a timeout. We'll take one as well. You're listening to Lady Tiger Basketball on 100.9. Having trouble understanding your internet connection? Just think of it in terms of water. The size of a water hose determines how quickly you get water, and the same goes for your internet. A garden hose pumps out less water than a fire hose, just like a 5 meg connection loads pages slower than a 20 meg. At the end of your hose is a sprinkler, which is equivalent to your router. If your sprinkler is old and clogged, it can only push out so much water, no matter how big of a hose it's connected to. For best results, be sure your router is up to date. For more questions, check out our website at bluevalley.net. 14-4 14-4 ball game. Lady Tigers out to a 10-point lead. It was Rock Creek up 2 nothing, and then 4-2, and it's been nothing but Clay Center since that time. A 12 nothing run walk, and they've kind of done it with defense leading the way. That's, that's their M.O., right? Uh, yeah, they've, uh, they've created six turnovers, and the next time that Sid and uh, Addy have one together, I'm going to reveal my beautiful <laughs> nickname for here is an uh, inbounds from the sideline. Rock Creek out of the timeout with the basketball out deep is Prockish. Back door look inside for veteran. Oh, uh, she had a chippy and missed it. Rebound away to Haley Franson who rips it away from two defenders. Off to Mullen. Addy through the center court. Looks at the zone defense now. Still in a, it looks like maybe 3-2. They skip it left and deep. Mullen hit a three earlier. Squares this one up and it's going to be short. Rebound to Vetter. Albert pass Prockish has it into the front court. Three on three numbers. They lob it down low. Quick look inside. A foul is going to be called against Clay Center. Looks like just a couple of players in the area of the basketball, but they call a bump against the Lady Tigers. So it's just the third team foul against Clay Center. Eight had been whistled against Rock Creek in this first quarter. The foul is on Addie Mullen. They say her first. Minute four to work first quarter. Clay Center by 10. Dribble drive inside. Thrown up toward the ring by Jensen. Misses, gets her own rebound, 
Now it's back again to Rock Creek, and this will be two free throws coming for the Mustang. So Clay Center unable to de- to clear the defensive rebound, and it'll be a chance at the stripe for Madison Figgy. Figgy, a 5'5 senior. In a team that just won five games last year, but those five wins came in the last ten games. They nearly knocked off Holton in the, the four Division II substate semifinals, and losing by two. So they were a much improved team as the year went along. At the line is Figgy e missed on the first free throw. Fifty-five to work first quarter. As Figgy e toes the line again. 5'5", five, five senior, misses short here, rebound ripped away by Hamill. Aaron, now to Mullen, Addy brings it across. Into the front court, left wing deep is Franson, back outside for Mullen. 45 to work, 14-4, Clay Center by 10, skip pass left, Mullen. Looking low, Callaway, back to the bucket, oh, great give inside. Ferguson can't make the shot in the mid lane. Good feed from Callaway, the two seniors hooked up, but Ferguson just unable to drop it in. 30 seconds now left in the first quarter, it's 14-4. Left and deep, great defense by France, and a traveling violation forced by the defense of Haley Franson outside. And they'll give the basketball to the Lady Tigers. Hannah Ferguson will inbound with 25 to work in his first period. Leading by 10, they'll look down at the zone defense of Rock Creek once again. Last time had a good look, just didn't finish. Mullen out deep as Clay Center will go for a final shot. Down to 12, Mullen with the basketball. They pressure out on her. Now 10, they'll start it in motion. Deep it comes out top to Callaway. Down to five. Now to Mullen with four, with three. Dribble drives to the corner. Kick out, and she stepped out of bounds. She found Branson a good look, but with 1.7 seconds left, they whistle her right foot just stepping on the end line. And so it'll be Rock Creek with one last possession. They'll heave it from three-quarter court. And that'll put the first quarter in the books. Clay Center leads it by 10, 14-4 when we come back. Gift cards from Ray's Apple Market are perfect for anyone on your Christmas list. From babysitters and teachers to coworkers, neighbors, and family members, everyone can use a gift card to purchase groceries, hot meals to go, or snacks for a road trip. So stuff a gift card in their stocking, attach it to a fruit basket, or mail it with your Christmas cards. They'll be surprised to get something extra that can be used year-round. Gift cards are available in any amount from Ray's Apple Market. When you grow corn or soybeans for a living, you're always looking for the latest advances to help your fields be more profitable. That's why it's time to turn to Channel. When you plant elite Channel seed products, you also get the services of your very own Channel Seedsman. You see, your Seedman works with you year-round to make the most of your operation. For customized service, expert advice, and elite seed products, contact Colton with Frontier Ag Supply, 785-630-0596. Lady Tigers out to a good start. Well, actually, the first couple of minutes, a little shaky. They were down 4-2, to two, but then they turned it on and really got the defense clamped down. They now lead it 14-4 as we begin the second period, leading scores in the game. Five points coming from Clara Edwards, four from Sid Galloway, three for Addie Mullen, and a two-pointer from Hannah Ferguson. It will be Rock Creek opening up with the basketball to begin this second period. Outside with it is Scott. Laney Scott with the dribble. Lob down low. They had a set play from the quarter break, but they overthrew the pass down inside that was looking for Kunkel. And so back to the direction will come Clay Center with the basketball and a 10-point lead. Outside is Mullen. Addy holds now at the top of the point. Lobs it down low looking for Callaway. Tried to throw to the top of the defense. It was tipped away, but then run down by Franson. Haley back out deep. It comes to Mullen. Play center with the 10-point lead in the basketball. Just underway in this second period. Mullen with it out deep. Addy to Hamill. Right back to Mullen. Sagged in zone defense right now by Rock Creek. Trying to keep the post from getting the basketball. Franson tried to go inside. It was batted away and picked up now. And then taken back. Almost taken back by Callaway. Scott came up with the steal. And as she started up the floor, Callaway almost snuck in from behind it. Popped it away, but it went out of bounds. 7-12 to work. First quarter, Clay Center leads it 14-4. Edwards back in for the Lady Tigers. So it's Edwards, Franson, Mullen, 
and the two seniors, Callaway and Ferguson, on the floor. Scott into the front court. Mullins made her pick up her dribble. Now in some trouble, and it's nearly taken away by Callaway. It is. Saved it bounds, and she's fouled. And Sid Callaway going to the free throw stripe. So there's the Tasmanian Devils and the Sidewalk Surfer Walk teaming up for the steal. They equal the Devil Surfer Rock. <laughs> When they play defense, it uh, probably feels that way to the offense. I guess. Devil surfer. <laughs> 14-4, Clay Center just one minute into the second quarter. Leads it by 10, and Callaway now at the strike to shoot two. She was two of two at the line earlier in that first period. Free throw here, rattles around and falls in. She now has five. 5-8 five, senior. With the Lady Tigers up by 11, 15-4. Rock Creek scored their four points in like the first minute of this game, and they have not scored since. Yeah, it's made the second free throw. Clamps down by the defense of Clay Center. Callaway now with six points, four of four at the free throw stripe. And Clay Center with a 12-point lead. Full court pressure on by the Lady Tigers. Scott. Races across the timeline. Now to the free throw stripe, all the way in the lane, and she drives right through Hannah Ferguson. Uh, called uh, for a blocking foul, and the bucket goes down, and it will be two fouls now on the senior for Clay Center. Looked like she was planted there for a long time. Scott, at the last second, kind of leaned herself to the right and almost made it look awkward. Went right through. Ferguson, maybe that's why the call was made, but yeah. it's a second foul. And it's going to have to come out that second foul. Callaway back in, so Sid joins Franson, Hamill, Mullen, and Edwards on the floor. Scott at the free throw stripe, able to convert the three-point play. She has her first points of the night. And the first points for Rock Creek since early in the first quarter. Against pressure now, Mullen gets it down the floor. Frank, uh, Hamill fakes the three, kicks it back outside to Edwards. Edwards to the three-point line. Back to Hamill. Wants the three ball. It's strong. Rebound. Here's Edwards inside. Going strong and fouled. And the freshman hit it to the free throw stripe again. Five points in the game for Edwards. She's one of two at the stripe. And a good offensive board there to attack the lane with. And then she ends up with the bump. She needs the game's leading scorer if she makes any of these free throws. Five points thus far. First free throw here is good. She and Callaway now with six of oh, Scott did have to get. They share the high-scoring honors to this point. 6.31 to go first half. By the way, at halftime, we get a chance to visit with Coach Brandon Begorsh. I sat down and talked with him earlier today. We'll have that conversation both in the Lady Tiger halftime and in the boys' halftime. Get you caught up on the Tigers from their duel last night against Chapman and their duels tournament tomorrow. At Riley County, Lexi Leiby in for the first time for the Lady Tigers, who lead by 11, 18-7. Down the court with the basketball is Kunkel, guarded by Mullen. Left and deep, dribble penetration. Pull up by Prockish, no good. Kunkel with the offensive board, can't finish. Callaway brings it away and now gives it off to Leiby. Lexi down court quickly to Addie Mullen on the left side. 18-7, Clay Center by 11, 6-10 to work. We're in the opening half of play, second quarter action. Mullen out deep with it against that zone. Hamill will roll from wing right across to the baseline left. Now we've got a travel on Livy. Started to trigger the three, and she can stroke the three-pointer walk, but kind of hesitated, and he called for the travel once she put the basketball down. It's probably, I don't know, she she might have played some garbage time last year, but probably the first meaningful minutes on a varsity team, she's a little bit leery out there. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, the, friend, or the sophomore now. The freshman did play last year. There's a three on the other end for Crocky. And now 18-10. to 10. Mullen in the backcourt, pressured by Scott. Just it across the midcourt line. 18-10. Clay Center with the eight-point lead. Five and a half to work first half. Mullen, left wing. To the high post is Callaway. Back in the corner right is Hamill. Now Livey out top. Three ball just strong. It almost rattled in off the high bounce. But it comes away to Rock Creek. I think they'll want Lexi taking that shot against the zone and try to break him out of it. Here's a dribble drive, fall away jumper on the baseline, no good by Kunkel. The rebound away to Hamill. Hamill to Mullen, Clay Center by 8 with 5.05 to go. We're in the second quarter. Mullen right wing and deep, this is Livey. Lexi to the post, double teamed is Edwards. Clara steps through it. Now out top, Hamill's got a good look for three. It's strong. Edwards tips the rebound, but it's pulled away by Prockish and 
the Rock Creek Mustang. Lady Tiger lead stays at eight as the ball is dribbled across by Kunkel. Guarded by Hamill now. Mullen near steal, and she's going to be caught for a reach across the arm. The right arm may have gotten the offhand of the ball handler, and then the left hand tipped it away, but they called the reach. A uh, ca- uh, foul called by former Clay Center teacher Larry Myers. That's right. He's roughing out here. Yeah, yeah one of the three will, officials. One of many will remember him. Absolutely. Yeah. Long-time coach and been officiating for quite some time, too. Here's front court now. Proxies with the basketball. Works to the left. Stops. Lobs it toward the wing right for Scott. She will dribble penetrate against Callaway. And an offensive charge. A little hesitation by the underneath official that time, but he did get the call right as there was a charge against Brock Creek. Placer has the basketball back. Sid Callaway taking the punishment to get the basketball back. That's Lane Scott. She's the same one that fought in Hannah a little while ago. Right. I think that might have been a little bit of a fake call there. <laughs> but we'll Hannah, take it. Hannah had to sit on the bench because she got to right. go. Lexi Libby brings it across for Clay Center. Right wing and deep is Hamill. Aaron, skip pass left, Libby to the corner, short corner is Edwards. Skip across, Hamill's got a good look for three again. This one just rimming off. That one almost cupped in, and it just rimmed out of there for Hamill. Back to the way will come Rock Creek. Midway point of the second quarter. Pull up jumper, Procky, no good. Weak side board, battle for him, picked up by Madison Figgy of Rock Creek. Mustangs have possession again. Kunkel with it out near the center ring. Libby out on her, and now a reach-in foul against Libby will be the seventh team foul on play center. It's a one-and-one coming for the Mustangs. 5-4 senior, Demi Kunkel. Play center is eight out of 11 from the line so far, and Rock Creek is one out of three. And one-and-one chance here coming, so both teams are in the bonus from here on out at the first half. 18-10, play center leads it by eight. They had the lead up to a dozen, and Rock Creek's made a little push here in the second quarter. At the line, Kunkel for the one and one. First free throw. It's the back iron kind of rests there and then drops in. Yeah, uh, they've outscored us 7 4 this quarter. Maddie Craig checking in for the first time for the Lady Tigers. So Clay Center with a couple of freshmen and Edwards and Craig. Two juniors, France and, and Hamill, and then the one senior, Callaway. Those two of the weirdest free throws that went in. Yeah, they didn't have seen. Did hit very softly, but they sure got through the net. And now the Lady Tigers throw it away. Craig, though, gets it back. Batting at the backboard gets it away to Callaway. 18-12, play center by six. Hamill skips left at Francis. Short corner left is Edwards out top. Craig steps toward the paint. Kick out to Hamill. Now Callaway to Edwards. Strong to the glass. Fucking good. And a chance at a three-point play for Clara Edwards, the freshman who has six already in the game. Now make it eight and a chance at hoop and harm. Great give off the uh, Callaway post for the bottom. I got her at nine. Nine points, you're correct. Okay. Well, yep, nine points. Be a double be a she makes this one. Chance for ten if she knocks in the free throw. 20 to 12. Clay Center needed that. Things had gotten a little tight down to the six-point game. She does drill the free throw. She's four or five at the stripe and has ten points here in the first half. It's 21-12. Not a bad first half of high school basketball. No doubt. Here's a shot on the weak side that is airballed. Hamill doing a good job to box out. Saves it in bounds to Callaway. They lob it up the floor to Franson. Nine-point lead for Clay Center. Franson runs it at the point. Wing right, Hamill. Craig has it. Maddie around left to Franson. Franson, skip pass, Hamill. Short corner, Edwards. Takes it toward the glass. Reverse now to the free throw line. Maddie Craig for two. It's short. Edwards with the board. Back in the lane. She'll take it up against contact. No foul calls. And now it's bumped out of bounds off of Maddie Craig. Good hustle play amongst the two. Uh, Rock Creek Mustang and Craig that time, but it went out of bounds off the Lady Tigers. The center had some looks on that possession, just could not cash it in. 21-12 with 2.56 to work. Full court pressure. Dunkel, long down court pass and throws it away. They just get Rock Creek to hurry up, and it seems to pay big dividends for the Lady Tigers on defense. They get the basketball back with a nine-point advantage. And that's nine turnovers they've created uh, on Rock Creek. And that's uh, not a steal that time, but Callaway had Kunkel in a hurry. The lob down four just too strong, and it went out of bounds to the Lady Tigers. Here's Franson, left wing deep for Maddie Craig. Maddie out top to Hamill, around right to Franson. 
to the corner, right it goes to Edwards. Skip back out top, Hamill. Left side, Craig. Maddie skips it across to Branson. Haley, short corner right, Callaway. Back up top, and it's Hamill for three, and again just rimming out. Left-handed stick back, Edwards bumps to the ground. She'll get to the free throw line to shoot two. It's an offensive board, but Aaron Hamill's like, that's one shooting right now. every time. You know, Hamill? She hasn't, yeah, yeah, she hasn't missed one bad at all, but that one, it, that one was all but down, I thought. Edwards will have two free throws coming. This is a double bonus here in the half and gets this one to rattle in. And she now has 11 in the game. Craig out, Livey back on. Hamill stays in. Callaway Franson with the stripe is the freshman player Edwards who has 11 thus far. One more free throw coming. That's a dozen first half points for Edwards and it's a 23-12 lead for the Lady Tigers. Crockies down court quickly toward the lane. Little uh, European slide step there. Got to the paint, couldn't finish it off. Here's Livey the other way. She'll stop, fakes the three. Now kicks it right to Hamill. Aaron with the basketball, 2.07 to work. Livey out top for Franson. She takes the three ball. It's strong. Rebound comes away to Megan Prockish of Rock Creek. 23-12, Clay Center by 11. Just under two to work. We're in the first half. Rock Creek with the basketball. Edwards out guarding. Now the drive by, and that's going to be an offensive foul again. Standing in and taking the punishment. Yes, too. The sidewalk surfer does it again. Sid Calloway draws the charge from Allie Jensen. Play center has possession back. 23-12, and that is the third foul on Jensen. You just got to get frustrated by being guarded by Sydney, you know, and just take out some frustration once in a while. Livey goes left and deep on the sideline, and now a bump against Rock Creek. This will put Haley Franson at the line for a one-and-one chance. Correction, two shots because they are in the double bonus. So Haley Franson, 5'6", junior, big part of the Lady Tiger program the last two years as a freshman and sophomore. Now here is a junior starter. First free throw just rimming off. Callaway, Edwards, Livy, Hamill on the floor at the stripe. Here's Franson trying to add to an 11-point Lady Tiger lead. And this one rims off, so tough shooting for Clay Center on that rim, it seems like. Here's a kick to the corner, pull up jumper Figgy. Two pointers up and down. Addison Figgy's first point of the night. And now we've got a violation. Edwards took it out. They say she grabbed it, then stepped across the line before getting herself positioned. And so a turnover against Clay Center. 23 14. It's only four against Clay Center. That's not too bad for a half of basketball. Keep it under 10 for a game. Coach always like that. With good pace on the in the game and yeah. tempo that they want to have. So absolutely. Minute 27 to work. Second quarter. Clay center by nine. Rock Creek throws it away. So 10 for them. The giving season. Clay center gave a turnover. And Rock Creek gave it right back. 23-14. 10 turnovers against Rock Creek in this first half. Franson will walk it down the floor. Matty Craig is back in. Franson, Hamill, Callaway with it. Edwards out there as well. Sid fakes left, goes right, all the way to the paint, and she's going to be called for the charge. Just couldn't really decide, I think, where she wanted to go and ended up just a little out of control once she got to the paint. So Rock Creek has it back with a minute 15. And that foul on Callaway, her first. Full court pressure by the Lady Tigers. Franson near steal. She does poke it away. And now they'll have to inbound it on the... It'll be on the sun. It will be on the sideline near the baseline. Length of the floor to go still for Rock Creek. Pressure again for Clay Center. Kunkel in the backcourt guarded by freshman Maddie Craig. Forcing her to go from side to side as she forces the turnover. Great job by Maddie Craig pressuring in the backcourt and just forced the carry. And Clay Center has it back with a minute eight remaining first half. 23-14. Lady Tigers, so now a timeout's going to be taken by Rock Creek. A minute eight to go, second quarter. You're listening to Lady Tiger Basketball on KCLY. In this risky market, does your farm have the protection it needs? Farmers Union Insurance is committed to providing our farm families with complete insurance solutions for every operation, large or small. We have products to cover everything from crops to combines, homes to barns, autos to auto steering your tractors. 
Our products will help manage your risk and keep you protected from the unknown. Give me, Jim Gearhan, a call at 632-3264 or stop by our office at 426 Lincoln Avenue in downtown Face Center. We are proud to support the Tiger Athletics. Back again at Rock Creek High School. Rocky Downing along with Walt Wallace, Bernie Fantilla, our studio engineer, the Lady Tigers with a nine-point lead here in the first half. Second quarter action, a minute eight remaining. Out of the Rock Creek timeout, the Lady Tigers bring Callaway, Franson, Craig, Edwards, and Hamill onto the floor. 23-14. Lady Tigers by nine. They have the basketball back off the turnover force by... Maddie Craig. Franson at the point. Right side wing to Hamill. Back out top looking for Franson. Callaway now to Franson. Now Craig has it left wing towards the corner looking for Edwards. Ball tipped. Edwards gets it back. Drives the lane. Puts it up. Can't get it. A lot of contact. Now the foul is called. And Clara Edwards, who has 12 first half points already. The freshman with 12 of the Lady Tigers, 23 first half points, is back at the stripe where she is... Uh, Gotten it going. She is now 6 of 7 from the line. Two free throws coming here. First charity up and won't quite rim across the front iron. Still a nine-point advantage. Rock Creek much improved. Knew that coming in. They worked second half of the season to a 5-5 five and five record in the final 10 games. Really put in some work in the off season. Edwards drops in the second free throw. She has 13 now. A 10-point lead, 24-14. Brockies in the backcourt. Craig, a near steal again or near forced turnover. Really pressuring on Brockies. They have yet to get it across the line. Now they do as Kunstel has it. Left and deep it comes to Figgy. 38 to work. We're in the second quarter. Clay center by 10. Figgy in the corner. Kick out deep. Around right it comes to Kunkel. Ball fakes it now out deep for Brockies. Takes on the three, steps into the free throw line. Foul is going to be called. Maddie Craig may get the whistle here, and two free throws coming for Prockish. Hit a three earlier, Prockish, the only three for Rock Creek, and faked it that time. Took off toward the lane and kind of shot a runner on that right elbow and called for the foul was Maddie Craig. Two free throws for Rock Creek, 27 to work first half. First free throw up and good for Prockish. 5-2 Junior has four points now. Again at halftime, just not far away, 27 seconds left first half. We'll hear from Coach Brandon Pagorish, talk Tiger Wrestling at halftime. This free throw, rebound to Clara Edwards. 23 to work, Clay Center likely would go for a final shot here with a nine-point lead in the basketball, and Franson holds it out near the timeline. Down to 12, and now they go with 10. High post, Edwards, 7. Six, left wing deep. Craig to Hamill with four to the post to get it inside. Here's Callaway up strong, and it just goes off the mark. And then play center is going to be called for a foul at the buzzer. Maddie Craig trying for an offensive board. And Rock Creek's going to be shooting two free throws on the other end. See who that is, Megan Prockish. In fact, the Rock Creek band you can probably hear has already kicked it into high gear. And well, not quite yet to halftime. That is the 10th team foul against play center, and so two free throws coming for Megan Prockish here. The 5-2 junior who hit one of two her last time down the court. Clay center with a nine-point lead. 24-15. First free throw is strong. And again, uh, Prockish will get one more. It was a double bonus. Basketball came off the rim with nobody on the lane. It rolled all the way over near the Rock Creek pep band. Official had to go in the stands to retrieve it. Now there's Prockey's second free throw. This one's short. Head of the halftime, the Lady Tigers lead at 24-15. Stay with us. Lady Tiger halftime up next. Personalized blood flow restriction is the latest in rehab technology available at Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Center. A specialized tourniquet is applied to an injured limb to temporarily reduce the amount of blood in the exercising limb. This allows a patient the ability to lift very light weights and still see similar results as lifting heavy. Positive results from BFR have occurred in Achilles tendon repairs, fractures, rotator cuff repairs, nerve injuries, and more. Ask about it at Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Center in Manhattan. 
production service is constantly looking for ways to help your bottom line grow. And with the Loveland products available, you'll get the results you want. From seed treatment and plant nutrition to fertilizer and crop protection, Crop Production Service offers top-of-the-line solutions to grow your crops, your bottom line, and your operation. Connect with your local CPS expert and experience the innovative products from Loveland. Crop Production Service, here to help you grow. Back once again, we bring you to Rock Creek as the Lady Tigers lead at 24-15 is your halftime score. It's a lead of nine points here at the break. And a little bit of back and forth blow in this game. The Lady Tigers started sluggish, down 4-2, to two, then went on a run, 14-4. to four. Actually got it to a 12-point lead at one time, and now a nine-point lead. Rock Creek kind of settled into the game a little bit, it seemed like. Yeah, they did, and they uh, outscored us the second quarter, uh, 11 to. 10, right? 10, yeah. yeah, just by one point. But um, stats kind of point that out. Clay Center was 6 out of 22, uh, 1 out of 10 from behind the three-point line. Rock Creek was 5 out of 18, 1 out of 3 behind the three-point line. Clay Center was 12 out of 18 from the, from the free-throw strike. Rock Creek was 4 out of 9. Clay Center uh, turned it over four times. Rock Creek 11. And here's the one stat that they beat us in. They out rebounded us the first half, sixteen to thirteen, and a lot of those offensive rebounds. I have a feeling they had second chances, didn't cash them all in, but had some looks anyway off the offensive board. Clara Edwards leads all scorers with twelve points. A freshman really came in and ignited uh, the offense. Got a bucket to go and kind of got the lid off the thing. Sid Callaway was six. Addie Mullen has three, two for Anna Ferguson, who has two fouls as well. Didn't play much of the first half. Megan Prockish with four for Rock Creek. Tabitha Vetter with four, three from Laney Scott. Two from Madison Figgy and Demi Kunkel. At the half, we'll take a timeout. When we come back, we're going to hear from Coach Brandon Pagorsch, Tiger Wrestling. Come spend a part of your afternoon at Union State Bank and help them ring in the Christmas season. It's time once again for their Christmas open house, and they welcome you to join them on Wednesday, December 6th from noon until 3. Enjoy refreshments and door prizes as you visit with friends and neighbors and share in the festive holiday cheer. Mark your calendars for Wednesday, December 6th from 12 until 3 o'clock at Union State Bank. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Back at halftime, a chance to talk with the head coach of the Clay Center Tiger Wrestling Program, Brandon Pigorsch, joins us here coming off the first duel of the year, the first action of the year on the mat for the Clay Center Tigers last night against the Chapman Irish. Coach, uh, first, welcome back. Uh, thanks for taking time out of what is an incredibly busy week for you guys, starting with yesterday and then right back into tournament action tomorrow. Uh, let's talk about last night for you guys, and I guess a little bit about the team. Uh, you've got some Great experience back with three state-ranked wrestlers coming into the season, but you've got some young guys just learning their way on the varsity mat, too, it sounds like. Yeah, we, we do. We, like you said, we've got um, you know three kids that, that, uh, that are state-ranked at the moment, but, you know, like I said, rankings are it's really early in the season to tell where everybody's going to be at, but it's nice to have those kids get some early season recognition. And then, um, you know, as a coach, it's also a good place you know, the beginning of the year to see where some of these new guys that um, got to step in the lineup last night, see kind of where they fit in, um, and then how we do. Um, we are pretty young. We have some good experience, um, you know, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what this year has to bring for us. Um, last night I got to see some really good things um, out of our kids. I got to see some things, too, that we need to improve on. Um, but I feel uh, this team that I have this year is going to make a lot of growth, you know, between now and, and the time uh, February when, when time really matters. So, Yeah, that's what the season is truly all about. We say it every year. Uh, last night, maybe a little look at uh, the wins that you guys had anyway last night. Red Coppice, one of your state-ranked wrestlers at 106, uh, win by fall. And then uh, Bryden Shoemaker open for Chapman, so he gets the bye. Uh, lower classes there, a good start for the night. Yeah, we started out well. Um, you know, Rhett, Rhett's coming in. He's been ranked, uh, I think he's ranked third right now. Um, but I kind of have expected good things out of him. He was um, had a great season last year as a freshman. It was just a little small for the 106-pound class. But he's growing into that weight this year, and um, he's a hammer. He's going to he's gonna do really well for us. Um, I expect him to, um, you know, come away as a state champion this year. Um, if not, place very high for us and then 
wrestled a lot in the summer, put a lot of time in, so he's he's gotten a lot better. Um, and then to see freshman Brian Shoemaker get in there and get himself a chance uh, to, one, be on the varsity mat, and then two, uh, unfortunately he got an open, but he got some team points for us last night, so that's a good thing. Then you move up to 138, 45, and 52, Reed Knitter, Keegan Brownell, Cam Osborne, all putting wins for you guys. Yeah, those are some uh, veterans for us, some kids. Um, who have really worked hard over the past couple of years. They're all three juniors. Um, and, you know, last year we're, we're probably about where they're at right now in terms of their performance-wise. They, they probably, you know, wouldn't have done as well as they did last night. So I saw some growth out of them. You know, last year maybe Keegan and Cam uh, end up on the losing side of those matches by a point or two. And last night, you know, we're winners. Um and so that's positive. It's shown some growth with them. And then I expect them to uh, to collect a lot more of those wins last year. They were just right there in a lot of those matches. Um, and so I expect them to kind of get over that hump this year on, on losing those close ones. And they're going to be winning a lot of matches for us. Um, unfortunately, you know, they weren't bonus point wins, which helps in duels. But, you know, a win's a win, and we'll take it. And those guys um, got their season started off well last night. And then Reed Nader. Um, had a had a good win last night. Did pick up a bonus point for us. Um, made state last year. Won a match, um, and he's state ranked at the moment. So um, he he wrestled pretty well last night, and I'm looking for him to do good things for us this season. And hopefully, he'll have himself a state medal at the end of the year. And then Gavin Ware, who is number one ranked right now in the state, uh, the Beast, uh, back at it again at 195 this year. A six nothing winner for Gavin. Yeah, Gavin looked really good last night. Um, Obviously, didn't score as many points as we wanted to, but that guy scored none on us, so um, that's a positive thing. Um, Gavin, you know, guys are kind of trying to figure out how he wrestles, so, um, you know, they know what's coming. They just got to stop it, and we have to also um, expect that, too, and kind of adapt our wrestling to scoring in a few different ways. And then Gavin has been working hard, um, you know, and, and he's willing to do that, so I think, uh, you know, his performances will continue to grow and get better as the season goes on. Let's talk about what's coming up for you guys uh, this week, weekend, and week ahead. It's exciting time for you guys. You open up at home. Next week you have another home duel on Thursday against Wamigo, then the Invitational a week from Saturday. But uh, tomorrow a big day for you guys and a, and a chance. I know you say this every year. It's a great chance to, for the, the guys to get on the mat and really get some action in. The, the duels tournament at Riley County is a good uh, early season tournament for you guys. Absolutely. You know, you get a chance to go out and wrestle five duels. Um, get five matches in a day, and for a young team, that's very beneficial. Um, you know, you want to stay healthy in those five matches because we that'll it'll be a, a test in terms of uh, our durability and our resiliency that first weekend. But um, that's good. That's a good test. That's a good way to test your kids, um, and it's a good competition. They've added a couple new teams this year, um, so it's actually gone from a five-team field to an eight-team field, and. They've added some bigger schools, Emporia, Shawnee Mission, East, and Larned are coming over. Um, I believe we opened our pool with Emporia and then Bonner Springs, and then we have a duel against um, Shawnee Mission East that will in our pool, and then how we do there will kind of branch us out into a bracket. So I'm looking forward to the weekend, looking forward to our kids, um, you know, going out and wrestling hard, gaining some experience, and picking up some good wins and probably having some learning moments throughout the weekend as well. So I'm excited for it. And then the Invitational next weekend um, coming up is, is really exciting. It's just a, a great atmosphere here in the community. You've got a great support um, from the community, and people love wrestling around here, so it's good to have our Invitational. We have a few shift um, changes and, and changes in the teams coming. Um, we're bringing in 4A El Dorado. Um, which is awesome to see more 4A teams, especially they're in our regional this year, so they're coming up. Uh, Perry LeCompton's coming over. Um, a few teams did get out of the tournament um, in Rossville and Junction City, but uh, like I said, we added a couple good ones, um, so it should be exciting. There's 11, 12 teams here. It's pool play. It's wrestling all day. starts at 9 a.m. at the CCCHS main gym, so excited and hopefully get to see a lot of people come out and check us out. Yeah, it's one of the, the, the great one-day tournaments uh, across the state each year, uh, the Invitational. It'll be a week from tomorrow, the 9th of December, so I'm excited for uh, the year ahead for the Tigers. Coach, uh, as I said earlier, appreciate uh, the time and, and good luck tomorrow. Hey, thanks a lot, and you know, it's, it's good to be back in the winter season and have, have wrestling going on, and uh, we appreciate all the support that we got last night, and and all the support we're going to get throughout the season. 
Looking forward to the year ahead and a chance to cover uh, the Tigers as the season gets rolling as well. Again, Brandon Pagorsch with us, Tiger Wrestling. They're headed to Riley County tomorrow. And we do bring you straight back here to Rock Creek High School. Our thanks to Coach Brandon Pagorsch. We'll give you a chance to hear that interview again coming up during our boys' halftime. Here are the Lady Tigers up 24-15 at the halftime break. A few scores to pass along for you. It is... Um, Abilene up big on Smoky Valley, 51-9. to That's after three quarters of action, so obviously they're in a running clock situation. Concordia trailing Beloit, 41-29. Also, Abilene, or Abilene mentioned up big. Wamego is in action, and they are trailing Rossville, 22-18. to We are underway here. The Clayson Lady Tigers will open with the basketball. They go inside quickly to Hannah Ferguson, who spins him with the left hand, finishes it off. And Clayson are now out to a double-digit lead, 26-15. Ferguson now with four points. Again, Clara Edwards, the freshman for the Lady Tigers, leads all scorers with 13 in the first half. Brock Creek looking at a man-to-man for Clay Center. Better picks up her dribble. Callaway all over. Now they'll fall in the lane. Loose for a moment, and Branson gets in the mix to tie it up. The arrow will go to Rock Creek. Clay Center had the opening possession. What a move, though, by Hannah Ferguson down inside. Yeah, you know, Hannah had to sit a lot of time on the pitch that first half. It looks like she's come out here ready to be aggressive in the second half. Took a great hard drop step with the right leg, and then with the left foot, took it up and put it down. It'll be Rock Creek's basketball on the baseline. 26-15, Clay Center by 11, 7.5 to work third quarter. Better, lobs it out deep. Mullen with a takeaway. The run down court against Procky spins, turns, and the whirling dervish ends up going in off the glass. Taz gets it done. Addie Mullen transition. Now with five, the Lady Tigers lead by 13. Pass to the post. Laney Scott wide open for two. A breakdown on the Lady Tiger defense. She has five now. Mullen, at last played down the court, had a defender on one side turn her right, and another defender turn her back left, and then she got around the first defender and ends up with the Bucket off the window. Ferguson drives the lane, unable to get it to go. Got a good step around her defender, but couldn't finish the lay-in. Clay center by 11. Scott in the paint again, posting up. This one rims off. Rebound to Franson. Now Mullen has it. Mullen will bring it across. Hamill, Callaway, Ferguson, Franson on the floor. The Lady Tigers lead here by 11 with the basketball. 6.37 to work. We're in the third. Branson with it, right wing and deep, trying to go to the high post, does now to Callaway. Skip pass left, Mullen, ball fake and drive, and she is going to be fouled on the way in. Bucket is good, but they will wave it off the foul before the shot. Clay Center's basketball out of bounds. Foul is on Demi Kunkel, her first foul. Both teams ended up in the double bonus in the first half. Ferguson off the inbounds, kicks it out toward Hamill. It's knocked away by Rock Creek. And Clay Center will have it now on the sideline. Right in front of Tiger coaching staff, Robert Moran and Mike Rothfuss, head coach Jeff Edwards. Here's Mullen to the glass, and yes, she dribbles in another one off the window. She now has four quick points, and Clay Center leads it here by 13. 30-17, great start to the second half for Clay Center. 6-13 to work third. 30-17, Clay Center, a 13-point lead now. Mullen with... Seven points now in the game. 6.03 to work here in the third. Rock Creek working offense inside the lane. They go to Scott. Foul called against, I believe, Aaron Hamill. See what the official calls, and it is on Aaron. Ferguson was in the area, but it appeared it was going to go against Hamill. It does. The terse second. Ferguson with two fouls. So Aaron comes out. Clara Edwards back in. Rocky has it outside. Well, walked with the basketball, got away with it. Shot, a runner, no good. Rebound to Edwards. Edwards will bring it herself to the timeline. Crosses over, now hands it off to Addie Mullen. Third quarter action, Clay Center by 13, trying to stretch this thing out a little bit. Callaway has it wing right, skips it across the Mullen. Ball fake, now skips it back to the weak side wing. Callaway, short corner right is Edwards, back to Callaway. Looking back toward the corner, now they skip it across the Mullen. Corner left is Ferguson. Ball fake, starts to drive, kick out. Callaway attacks the lane, is fouled on her way to the paint. She'll get two free throws. Zid had four free throws out of four chances in the first half, six points in the game. And now a chance here at the stripe again to increase this 13-point lead. That foul against Jensen is her fourth for Rock Creek. 
Callaway at the stripe. First free throw is good. Nice soft touch by Callaway. 5'8 senior now with seven points and the lead for Clay Center after 14. Callaway toes the line here, trying to increase the Lady Tiger lead and does. She now has eight points, six of six at the stripe. It's 32-17. Clay Center now with a 15-point advantage and now full court pressure as well. Hamill back in. Entry pass on the sideline, Prockish. Through a double team, poke away by Edwards, but it goes to a Rock Creek Mustang. Now on the sideline, Ferguson's going to be called from the bump. Just could not stop her forward progress as the uh, ball handler reached down and stopped, and she ran right into her. She's going to have to come out again, probably. It's her third foul. We'll see if they are going to let her play a bit with it anyway as Rock Creek inbounds from the sideline. Maybe a chance to test the seniors. Ability to play with some foul trouble, and now we've got a fourth foul called. Just a loose ball situation. Ferguson, Mullen, all in the both in the area, along with Tunkel. And Ferguson's going to pick up her fourth foul, and she will have to come out now. Well, I'll tell you what. Two of those fouls were bogus. That one there was bogus, and the and the charge that she got called, or not the charge, the when she uh, drew the charge, yeah. and they called it a block, right? Yeah. Here's a lob inside the lane and a jump ball or a foul. No, they call a foul. Branson with weak side help came across the arm trying to strip the ball away. 5-12 five, five, remains, third quarter, 32-17. From the baseline, it will be better to inbound it. 5-7 sophomore. Saw a lot of time last year as a freshman for Rock Creek. Pass comes in on the wing left to Abby Reuter. Now across right, Prockey. Spullin near steel. Prockey drives the lane. We've got a traveling violation. Mullen got her in a hurry. Edwards had help side defense, and Prockey's travels. Play center has the basketball back. 32-17, Lady Tigers by 15 with 5.05 to work third quarter. Rock Creek showing a little down court pressure, and they back out of it. And Addie Mullen will bring it across. Three minutes into the second half, Clay Center stretched a 11-point lead at halftime. Correction, a 9-point lead at halftime to 15 now, and they have the basketball. Hamill fakes the three. Out top, Mullen. She'll look at the three. No, back to Hamill. Now at the high post, free throw line jumper from Edwards. Rims off. The rebound away to Rock Creek. Been lost, but picked up by Laney Scott. Mustangs on the boot. Kunkel for the paint. Ball away jumper. Tough shot. Branson right in her mug, and she's still able to get it down. She has four. Here's Mullen the other direction. Kick out right wing. Branson three balls short. Rebound tipped by Hamill, then picked up by Callaway. Now she lobs it back out deep to Mullen. 4.15 to work, 32-19. Clay center by 13 with the basketball. Skip left, Mullen. High post, Edwards. Clara turns, squares, puts it out right wing to Branson. Now they skip it back across to Mullen. Low post, Callaway. They slide it off to Edwards and a blocking foul in low against Rock Creek. Edwards got a big bump. You can see her wincing a little bit as she goes toward the free throw stripe again. Good feed from Callaway and the cut by Edwards got her open, and she got the bump. That foul against Reuter is her fourth. So Clayson has four fouls on Ferguson. Rock Creek has four fouls against both Jensen and Reuter. Reuter was the one that replaced Jensen, too. Right. So what to do now? Edwards misses on the first of the two free throws. Thirteen first-half points for Clara. 4.04 remains. In the third, play center by 13 points, 32-19. Edwards steps back up to the line. Callaway, Hamill, Mullen, Branson in the game. This free throw perfect. She's got 14 now. Leads all scores in the game. 33-19, play center. Full court pressuring. Prockey's going to get it across the timeline with Mullen still guarding. And now we've got a timeout taken by Rock Creek. 33-19, 33-19, Clay Center, a 14-point advantage here at Rock Creek when we come back. TSI Kansas and Clay Center would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the farmers and truck drivers that chose our full-service diesel repair shop. We're glad to provide the necessary maintenance and repairs needed on your truck or trailer so that you can get the load where it needs to be safely and on time. We look forward to another wonderful year. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your success. TSI Kansas and Clay Center. Give us a call at 785-632-5183 for all your diesel maintenance and repair needs. 
Take action now for a successful crop next year. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed and Feed, we're ready to help you plan for next season weed control, moisture conservation, and fertilizer needs. For your plan, we'll utilize soil testing and variable seed rates to come up with site-specific fertilizer and seed systems. Now's a good time to establish your fertilizer and chemical program for productive crops in 2018. Wilbur Ellis and Reed Back once again, we bring you to Rock Creek, the place of the Liddy Tigers, a 33-19 lead with 3.58 remaining in the third quarter. Rock Creek calling the timeout against the Tiger pressure. They'll inbound from the backcourt on the sideline just by the scorer's table. Play center denying the basketball to be inbounded to start. Now they get it into Kunkel in the front court. Kick out right baseline better. Has used her dribble up. Throws to the post. Scott and a foul called against Edwards. Kind of trailing the post up that time. And the offhand may be on the hip they called or a hold coming through the lane. But it will be a foul against the Lady Tigers. See on the floor. Second foul on Edwards. Rock Creek inbounds toward the paint. We've got a foul call. They're going to count the bucket. And a chance at a three-point play. Addie Mullen calls for the foul. I'm sure that guy's a fine person, but I don't really appreciate his fishing. <laughs> he's, the one, he's the one making all the bad calls. Mullen picks up her third. And a three-point opportunity for Megan Brockish, who has four points in the game. And drills the free throw. 33-22. Clay Center's 15-point lead down to 11 now. Mullen, down court. Three-on-three numbers on the... Wing right, goes behind the back. Now hesitation move, gets underneath the lane. Out top it comes to Franson. Ball fake and drive, kick out to Mullen. Left corner, it comes to Edwards. Slides underneath the defender. Edwards now with 16. It's 35-22. Good ball movement to begin, and then Edwards did the rest with a great step-through move. And now Rock Creek throws it away, unforced this time on the sideline. 35-22 ball game, Clay Center by that 13-point margin. Edwards will inbound from the sideline, needing help. That gets it from Franson. Haley will bring it up herself, it looks like. Also has help from Edwards, and now they get it to Clara. Six-foot freshman, has 16 points in the game, and she can handle it as well for Clay Center. Brings it across, and now gets it to Franson. 3-10 to work. We're in the third. Clay Center by 13. Callaway, the top of the key, holds outside the arc. Now looking at low to Wobbit. Can't get a look inside. Now it's Hamill. They go back to the post. Here's Edwards. She'll take it up. Baby hook almost falls. She does get the foul on Figgy. And Clara Edwards back to the free throw line. Three minutes remains, third period. 35-22, Clay Center with a 13-point lead. Clara Edwards with 16 points to lead all scores. And the freshman has two free throws coming here. First one is going to be short. One more coming with Clay Center up by 13. Lady Tigers will be back at it Tuesday and Friday next week. And now the free throw good by Edwards, who has 17 points in this ball game. We're three minutes away from the end of the third quarter. Practice across the timeline. Now dribble penetrates all the way to the lane. Wild shot, no good. Loose ball rebounded. Saved in by Scott. Picked up by Mullen. One on three numbers. Addy takes it on into the lane. No good. Tip in by Callaway. Sid Callaway caught that midair, hung in the air, and Kissed it off the glass with a tip in. It's 38-22. Clay Center now their biggest lead of the game. Here's a drive by Kunkel. She dra- traveled, getting through two defenders. And Clay Center has it back with a 16-point advantage. Ten points now for Callaway. What a tip in on that last play down the court. Mullen will bring it across. Clay Center leads by 16 now. Addy holds it outside. Now they start the offense. Callaway lobbed down low. Edwards again. Yes! Could have been some contact. Wasn't fall. She has 19. 40 to 22. And Clay Center starting to stretch it a bit. 211 left to work in the third. Long three from Vetter. Short. Long rebound. Chased down by Vetter. Now she's in a double team. Goes to the corner right. Shot on away from Piggy is strong. Rebound weak side to Scott. She'll step through and gets the laying down. Scott has six, correction seven for Rock Creek. Clay Center's lead is 16. Addie Mullen will bring it across. 
And he holds outside. Now to the corner left. Hamill, three ball on its way. Bingo! Aaron Hamill drills it from the left corner for three and plays it early by 19. A minute 30 remains in the third. Pressure by Mullen on Procky. She'll get rid of it to Kunkel. Now pressured by Franson and kind of got tied up with Kunkel. A foul is going to be called against the Lady Tigers, and that'll be the 17th foul, the second foul against Franson in the game. So two fouls on Franson, 17 fouls. That means a one and one chance here for the Rock Creek Mustangs. A minute 24 left to the third. Clay Center leads it by 19. 20 and 3 campaign last year for the Lady Tigers. Starts the season ranked third in 4A Division Two. Rock Creek with the front end of the one and one good by Kunkel. She has five points now. One more free throw coming. 43-25. This free throw rims out. It's picked up by Clara Edwards. Down court with it to the right corner. Spins it back out. Still has her dribble. Now gives it away to Mullen. Minute 13 to work. We're in the third. Clay center by 18 points here. Mullen with the dribble out top. Man-to-man by Rock Creek. Right side wing, it goes to Callaway. Looks low, nothing there. Brings it all the way around and hands it off now to Franson. They run a weave out top. Now it's Hamill with it. Aaron hits the three ball last time down. To the corner left is Callaway. To the post, Edwards turns, spins, takes it up inside, and drops it in. 21 for the freshman tonight. We're not even to the end of the third quarter at this point. It's 45-25. And now a foul on the sideline, a bump against either Callaway or Mullen. If it's on Addy, I think that's her third. No, it's her fourth correction. So four fouls now on Addie Mullen and on Hannah Ferguson. And that'll bring in Reagan Henry for the first time tonight on the varsity court. JV won big for the Lady Tigers earlier. They had a running clock going late. So Henry and Edwards, the two freshmen. Then you have Franson, Hamill, Edwards with the rebound, and the senior out there, Sid Callaway. 40 seconds left, third quarter. Reagan Henry brings it across the timeline with the dribble out top. Looks at a 2-3 zone now by Rock Creek. Backs it out with 30 seconds left. Henry will hold. They may go for a final shot here with a 20-point lead and with possession. And now a reach-across foul on Rocky. He's just trying to make Neely Franson pass the basketball. The official even gave a little grin like, I don't really want to blow this whistle, but I have to. And so it'll be Clay Center's basketball on the sideline, the 15th foul on Rock Creek. Now it's Reagan Henry who holds it again. Clay Center will wind this down looking for a final shot. 14 to work. Now puts the dribble down with 11. With 10, they'll go into motion. High post, it comes to Edward. Clara turns in square. Six seconds left. Drives, kick out. Henry's got to look for three. Yes! The freshman drills it on the left baseline. And Clay Center stretches the lead to 23. Edwards to Henry to close out the quarter, and the Lady Tigers lead 48-25 as we go to the fourth. Wish you could be in two places at once? With leading innovative technology from Valley Irrigation and AgSense, you can. It's a combination that lets you keep one foot in the field and one in the action, so you can monitor your pivots from anywhere. Check real-time weather, machine configurations, soil moisture, and more, all from the palm of your hand. If trouble strikes, receive alerts on everything from stuck pivots to wire depth. So when it comes time to cheer on your favorite team, you can be sure you never miss a play. See Republican Valley Irrigation or call 632-5588. Don't have time to stop by a bank to open an account? No problem. With United Bank and Trust, we make it easy by bringing our bank to you. Whether you're at home, at work, or anywhere you have access to a computer, simply go to ubankonline.com and click on the open an account icon. Save time by opening an account online with United Bank and Trust. It's banking for your way of life. Member FDIC. Back again in Rock Creek. The Clay City Lady Tigers stretch this lead out to 23 points. And what a freshman-to-freshman combo to close out the third quarter. Wow. That was impressive. Three-pointer by Reagan. I mean, her and, her and Aaron hit threes that, and right. uh, with that double, the threes that we hit the first half, so... Clara, that was a good quarter for the Lady Yeah, a great quarter. Defensively, 
able to keep him in check in an offense that just got it rolling during that third period. They'll open up with the basketball and that 23-point lead right now. Into the paint, Hannah Ferguson, ball fake, step in, shot just short off the rim, the rebound away to Laney Scott of Rock Creek. Now the ball taken back away, Mullen down court with it, the dribble, left side all the way to the glass, and it's fouled on the way in there, and Mullen will get to the free throw stripe. She had a three-on-one that time, and with that strong left hand, took it in and got the bump. She'll be at the stripe to shoot two now. Play center had 24 points in the first half, and 24 points in the third quarter. <laughs> they did get it going, didn't they? Especially Clara Edwards, who now has 21 in this ball. He's definitely impressed. Difference maker. Uh, and I, I'm sure she would have played a lot, but with Hannah having foul trouble this whole game, she's probably getting a few more minutes than she probably would have. Eddie Mullen hits one of two. She has eight points now. Clay Center leads it 49-25. Just underway in this fourth quarter. Rock Creek with the basketball. Clay Center in a man-to-man. Campbell, Callaway, Ferguson, Mullen, Henry on the floor. The pass down to the lane. Good look for Rock Creek. Good finish. Six back. Crocky fouled. And she'll get to the strike to shoot two. Megan Crocky with seven points in the game. We'll get two free throws coming here. 49-25. Two free throws on the stick-back try that missed. First free throw hit about every part of that rim, and it rolled off. Lexi Leiby back in, and Reagan Henry will come out. Big three-pointer to close down the third for the freshman. Leiby back on the floor. Prakish with the second free throw. Missed on the first. And gets the second one of rim in there. She has... Now eight points in a game. Here's Mullen down court quickly. Gets by a defender toward the lane. Kick out. Ferguson. Ball fake and dry. To the paint. Little soft touch inside by Hannah Ferguson, who has six now. And Clay Center leads it 51-26. Laney Scott and Rock Creek with the basketball. Callaway near steal. She's going to be called for the bump trying to get to the basketball. And this will be free throws coming for the Mustangs. It will be at the line, Allie Jensen, one of two Mustangs who have four fouls. They have three. Number three with four Number uh, four has four fouls off of Eddie Geertz. So at the free throw strike, charity up and good for Allie Jensen, her first points tonight. 51-26, seven minutes remains in the ballgame. Jensen. 5A Jr., second free throw rims off. Long rebound to the corner, chased down by Rock Creek, but out of bounds. Clara Edwards back in. Mullen, Leiby, Franson, Ferguson on the floor. Franson to Edwards. Clara will bring it up herself. Now, bullet pass down court for Mullen, trying to go inside to Ferguson. It was taken away for a moment, then it was a double dribble against the Mustangs, and Play Center ends up having the basketball. 51 26, 651 remains, fourth quarter. Addie Mullen will inbound. Looking to lob it in low, not there. Now has to get it in somewhere and does on the wing right to Leiby. Lexi in the corner for Mullen. Addie will bring it back out. Ferguson posting in low along with Edwards. Now on the wings are Leiby and Franson. Lexi has it right side wing. Pressured by Prakish. Out top, Franson around left to Mullen. Addie looks low. Now to the top of the frame it comes for Leiby. Long three pointer, no good. Rebound, Ferguson. And the ball fakes, now dribble penetrates, takes it up through contact, no foul, gets her own rebound, falling to the ground. Anna saying a little bit of the contact, you whistled on me, I could take and return, but does not get a call this trip down. Instead, it will be Rock Creek with a basketball. 51-26, Clay Center by 25. Scott with it. At the top, it comes right to Jensen. Ball nearly thrown away. Scott able to run it down for the Mustang. Down to the post, it goes inside, and the blocking foul called against Franson. Haley Franson will be whistled for the foul. That'll put Rock Creek back at the free throw stripe. 6 10 remains in the ball game. Clay Center with a 51 26 lead. At the free throw line is Abby Reuter. Free throw up and rims off. 
She'll get one more on the two-shot foul. It's a double bonus the rest of the way for Rock Creek. But again, Clay Center has stretched it out, scoring 24 third quarter points. And they lead by 26, or by 25, I should say. And now make it 24 as the second free throw goes in. So Reuter, one of two at the stripe. Pressure by Rock Creek. Ferguson into Mullen. Back to Hannah. Now on the sideline left is Franson. Mullen drives the paint. Hesitation move. Good kick across. Livey, quick jumper up and down. Lexi Livey's on the board. Good dish that time from Addie Mullen. And Livey, good stop and pop for two. Three-pointer on the other end. Missing. Rebound. Here's Edwards. Two on one with Mullen. Edwards all the way to the paint. Takes it strong. Can't get it down. Rebound tipped by Francis. Pulled away, though, by Vetter of Rock Creek. 53-27. Clay center by 26 here. Edwards the steal and then fouled. She'll have free throws on the other end. A one-and-one coming. 21 points tonight for the freshman. I think that was the first time tonight that I've seen her not finish. Yeah. On that play. That was a great play. She got herself to the hole and just couldn't get it to drop. Gets two free throws coming here after the steal. Foul is called on Laney Scott. That's another Rock Creek Mustang with four fouls. 53-27. Edwards, one and one. Front end on the way. Cashed in. She'll get another free throw. She has 22 tonight. The freshman. First varsity performance, 22. She'll get another free throw coming here. 54-27 with 5.36 remaining. Place into the lead late in this fourth quarter. Edwards' second free throw. Perfect. 23 in the game for the freshman. I'll bet you that's a Lady Tiger record. I was I mean, actually I trying Nicole. to think to myself. I doubt Nicole had 23 when she was a freshman. She could have. First game. And she didn't play until midseason. Oh. Well, I'm calling that it there. Year. It's a new record for the Lady Tiger freshman. Bucket inside by Reuter. 55-29. Clay Center leads it. Anna Ferguson off to Addie Mullen. Addie brings it across. Jaden Crimmins checking in at that last dead ball. Maddie Craig also back on the floor. Now uh, we've got a foul on the sidelines. I think she's gone. And it'll be free throws for Addie Mullen. She'll have a one-and-one one chance once again. And Laney Scott has just fouled out. Back in will come Reuter. 5-14 left. Clay Center leads it 55-29. One and one for Mullen. Front end is up and good. She has nine now. Could be the third Lady Tiger in double digits if she can drill this one. 56-29. Clay Center leads it. Free throw is strong. Rebound pulled away inside by Reuter. Off to Vetter. Play center back defensively man-to-man. Crimmins, Franson, Ferguson, Craig, Mullen on the floor. Outside, near steal by Crimmins. Pull-up jumper at the free throw line is off glass and no good. Rebound to Mullen. Just under five to work. Play center has the lead, 56-29. Left sideline, Maddie Craig rips it through, drives to the left. Now back outside and deep for Mullen. Tipped, but she has it. Around right to Franson. Haley will dribble drive to the glass. is hammered from behind by Kunkel. And Haley Franson now gets free throws. Lady Tigers have been doing well from the line tonight. 12 out of 18 in the first half. And they are 9 out of 12 so far here in the second. 4.42 left in this game. 56-29. Haley Franson at the stripe. Shooting two. And it will be two the rest of the way. This was a shooting foul, but... The next foul would be the 10th on both teams. First free throw missing for Haley. Addie Mullen will come out. Lexi Livey is back in. So Livey, Craig, Franson, Crimmins, Ferguson on the floor. Second free throw rims out. And now a reach-in foul on Hannah Ferguson will be her fifth. 6-1 senior finishes with six points. Fouls out with 440 remaining. Lady Tiger freshman has scored 27 points tonight. Very impressive. Clara Edwards, 23 of those back on the floor. Well, that's 28 then because uh, 
Reagan had a three, right? And then Lexi had a two. Well, Lexi's a soft. So that, oh, okay. So it's uh, well, still an impressive freshman. Group. Twenty uh, six. Yeah. Twenty six of the points for freshman. Yeah. Free throw misses. Rebound. Edwards foul, and we'll go to the other end to shoot free throws. And that's nine. She'll have a double double if she gets one more rebound here. Right. There you go. Clara Edwards scored the first bucket for the Lady Tigers, got inside the left hand, and then it seemed to just kind of loosen things up for Clay Center's offense. They went on a roll in that first quarter. Then we're kind of a little, they scored 10 in the second period, but Rock Creek kind of settled in. The third quarter, though, all Clay Center. Edwards knocks in the charity. She has 24 now. 57-29, Clay Center leads it. 439 remains in the fourth. Edwards' second free throw, rims off. Rebound away to Madison Figgy of Rock Creek. Now it's better bringing it up the right sideline, guarded by Franson. Nearly lost it, does. Franson takes it away. Numbers going the other direction. Franson toward the paint will go all the way to the lane, laying no. Rebound just out of bounds to Rock Creek. Jaden Crimmins, Lexi Livey both going for the offensive board, but called out of bounds off of Clay Center. Edwards out, Franson out, Reagan Henry and Sid Calloway back in. Maddie Craig, Jaden Trevitz, Lexi Livey on the floor as well for Clay Center. 420 remains in the ball game. 57-29, Clay Center leads it. Prockies down court. Craig nearly got a steal. Prockies kick out, go to Better. Three-point attempt up and good. Better with seven points. She scored Rock Creek's first four points in early first quarter. First point since that time. Here's Callaway up the right side to Reagan Henry, who will run the offense out top. Midway point, fourth quarter. Clay Center up by 25. Kremen, backdoor look for Craig. Maddie Craig up and couldn't quite get it down. The rebound away to Rock Creek. Uh, maybe some contact could be called, but Rock Creek able to get away with it. Here's Brockies for three, right corner. No, rebound. Kremen tips it. Picked up by Reuter. Now she'll take it up in the lane. It won't go. Rebound inside. Ripped away by Maddie Craig to Lexi Leiby. Leiby brings it up. Sprint dribble. Now the corner right. Henry hit her first three-pointer. This one just off the front iron. And the rebound away to Tunkel of Rock Creek. 3.20 left in the game. Clay Center leads it here. 57-32. All tipped away by Clay Center out of bounds. But Rock Creek's basketball, they've given this to Clay Center. Now the official finally realizes. Callaway with a wry grin on her face. Goes back on defense. He had the five count started, and Sid and Coach Jeff Edwards were nice enough to say it really isn't our basketball right now. 313 to work, 57-25. Clay Center by 25. Here's Biggie right wing. No good. Rebound to Lexi Livey. Livey up the right sideline, and she's fouled. She'll get a chance at the stripe. She hit a stop-and-pop two-pointer off a fast-break pass from Addie Mullen in the third quarter. Now a chance to step to the stripe to shoot two, and the foul was on Tabitha Vetter. That is her fifth. 304 remains. Clay Center on top, 57-32. At the line, Leiby drills the first. 27 points for 5-4 sophomore. 26 Freshman points. <laughs> no. I keep thinking she's a freshman. Yeah, yeah. It is. He's a softball. You gotta, I won't do that again. <laughs> Four points for Libby. She drills both free throws. 59-32. Near still by Maddie Craig outside. Still pressuring on Procky. for great defense. Now Procky's able to get to the lane. Throws one toward the paint. They uh, call a foul against play center. Kind of a bailout foul for Procky. She was a little out of control, but she's going to get to the stripe, although thumbs up favoring her left leg a little bit, it looks like. 59-32, 2.51 remains in the game. Clay Center leading here by 27. Prokish at the stripe has eight points in the game. First free throw on its way and rims in. Nine for the junior. 5-2 junior. Prokish. And one more free throw coming. Just under three left in the ballgame. Clay Center leads at 
There's Crocky Shift both charities, and she has 10 now. Up the right sideline is Leiby crosses over. Kick toward the paint. That ball tipped by Crimmins and off of Craig and out of bounds to Rock Creek. Mustangs get it back. 59-34. Kunkel with it across the timeline. Works it right now. Hesitates. Goes left. And a timeout taken by Rock Creek. Timeout on the floor will break as well. 235 remains. Clay Center leading here 59-34. Ho, 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 it's Jolly St. Todd from Walls True Value. Hey, we've got to make room for Christmas decorations and merchandise because, well, poor me and Terry say so. So we need to sell a bunch of appliances. Get washers with agitators starting at $265, matching dryers at $250, smooth top electric ranges starting at $300. Hey, if you have rentals or you want high-end appliances, we have a huge selection to pick from at Walls True Value in the beautiful downtown Clay Center, open seven days a week for you. Injuries can occur at inconvenient times, but Ortho On Call is there for you. The After Hours Injury Clinic at the Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Center is open Monday through Friday till 8 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday till 4 p.m. They can treat broken bones, strains and sprains, as well as small cuts or wounds with no appointment necessary. Ortho On Call provides an alternative to emergency rooms and urgent care, and they accept most insurances. Located at 1600 Charles Place in Manhattan, the greatest comebacks be Again, here. 59-34, Lady Tigers up big as they uh, work their way to the 235 mark here in this fourth quarter. So late minute of the ball game, placing her up big, 59-34. Rock Creek does have the basketball off of a Mustang timeout. From the sideline, it'll be inbounded by Madison Figgy. To the corner left it comes, inside the paint, Reuter steps through, shot off glasses up and down. Abby Reuter has three. Jaden Crimmins to Manny Craig across the timeline, runs into a double team and a foul call against Rock Creek. Demi Kunkel, and it'll be uh, Manny Craig with a chance to strike. Freshman has come in and handled the ball well and certainly given Rock Creek troubles on the defensive side, pressuring the basketball. Chance to score here. She misses the first of two. And we have a timeout taken on the floor, looks like, by the Lady Tigers. 59-36, Clay Center leading. 221 remains here at Rock Creek when we come back. Enjoy a jolly good internet upgrade and be prepared to handle your holiday visitors. You'll instantly be amazed at the difference it makes when you move up to faster speeds with Twin Valley Pulse. It's a sure way to make everybody smile. Choose the plan that will make you the merriest, 100 megabits per second for $59.95 a month, for the full gig for $99.95 a month. No phone line is required. Call Twin Valley at 800-515-3311 to sign up. Certain restrictions apply. Raising your crop and getting it in the bin is half the job. Selling it is the other half. To market your grain for top dollar, you need the professional edge of experienced consultants. ProEdge Consulting from Central Valley A. CBA ProEdge Consulting brings you timely knowledge of the cash markets, basis information for the entire market. You'll know your production and storage costs, your break evens, and how to manage risk. ProEdge Consulting helps you maximize grain marketing profit. Get details at your local Central Valley Ag location or at cbacoop.com. 59-36, play center of the lead. Maddie Craig will be at the free throw stripe out of the Tiger timeout. Caden Crimmins, Aaron Hamill, Reagan Henry, Lexi Levy on the floor as well. Maddie's free throw up, and this one's good. There's another freshman point. 27 for you, Wonk. Down court with it is Kunkel. Left sideline, kick out top. Drive by Prockish, lost it, got it back. Now in a crowd, kicks it out to Figgy at the top of the key. Kunkel, Libby, good defense. Kunkel shot is strong. Rebound, Reuter and Hamill battle for it, and a loose ball foul called against Clay Center. And that'll put Reuter at the line to shoot two. And Hamill called for the foul, although both players just kind of going for a loose ball. Pretty patchy out there tonight. Mm-hmm. Shot a lot of free throws. Reuter makes the first. Yeah, it's two for three at the stretch. Had two people foul out, maybe more. Yeah. No, two for Rock Creek. Oh, three total, then. One for Clay Center. Maddie Craig, the rebound off the missed free throw. 
Under two to work. Reagan Henry now with the dribble drive. Kick out to Craig. Maddie got a step early before putting the ball down. And so the possession goes back to Rock Creek. Crockies will bring it across. 60-37. Clay Center leading. A minute 45 remains. Out top. Craig near steel. Livey does get it. Now down court further to Craig. Maddie stops in the lane. Kicks it across. Livey. Good dribble drive and a bucket good. Livey has six. Great feet for Maddie Craig. 62-37. Down court. Piggy with it. Baseline right. Dribble penetrates. Knocked away by Craig and out of bounds. Two Rock Creek on the baseline. Minute 27 remaining here. Kind of a move there on the baseline. She was getting thingy with it. <laughs> Swalk, Swalk on fire tonight. Oh, yeah. Timeout taken by Rock Creek before a five count was about to be called. 62 37. A minute 27 remains in the game. A timeout on the floor. We're back in a moment. Think of how much your lifestyle revolves around the latest technology. Radio Shack is dedicated to bringing your eyes and ears much of what the world of electronics has to offer. The sights and sounds are brilliant and clear. Whether you're choosing a flat screen TV, a laptop, camera, camcorder, or video game, Radio Shack inside Patterson's Health Mart is also your source to find a wide variety of electronic components, accessories, adapters, and connectors. Plus, you'll find friendly, helpful service at your local Radio Shack in Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy in downtown Clay Center. Intensive sampling, various soil mapping, and variable rate application of fertilizers can improve the efficiency of nutrient management. CS Precision Ag can assess nutrient availability of different areas within a field and recommend the right product to improve your bottom line. New customers for the fall are currently being accepted at CS Precision Ag. They serve producers throughout North Central Kansas and South Central Nebraska. Contact Clayton Bott or visit them online at CSPrecisionAg.com. Along with studio engineer Bernie Fancello, Rex Downing with Larry Walk Wallace on a Friday night opener for the Clay Center Tigers and Lady Tigers. Lady Tigers up 62 to 37. Rock Creek out of the timeout. Draws up the play to get it inside. Figgy with the shot down low. No. Rebound Hamill. Kick out. Jaden Crimmins in the front court. Now trying to sprint into the lane. Does and is fouled, and she'll get to the strike. In a crowd, she caught and still got control and got to the lane, and then eventually was fouled, and Jaden Crimmins with a chance to shoot two. 62-37, Clayson into the lead here, late with a minute 18 remaining in the ballgame. Crimmins at the stripe. First free throw on its way, and good. 5-7 sophomore, gets her first point of the evening. A lot of people in the scoring column tonight for the Lady Tigers. Second free throw, also good. Crimmins with two. Franson back in. Hamill will come out. A minute 18 remaining. Clayson are up by 27. 64-37. Lady Tigers lead. Kunkel, front court. Left sideline it comes to Addie Gertz. Now the pass to the paint. Crimmins knocked it away. Craig has it. Now it's kicked away by Rock Creek. Ball loose near the timeline. Maddie in there in the mix to tie it up. The possession arrow this time going to Rock Creek. Biggie will inbound with a minute four left. And Clay Center on the way to a 1-0 and start, leading by 27 here late fourth quarter. Uncle has it, right side wing. Biggie for two just stepped inside the three-point line. That rebound's going to go out of bounds. And two play center with 57 seconds remaining. Franson along with two sophomores. Franson a junior. Two sophomores at Crimmins and Livy. And then two freshmen at Craig and Henry on the floor. 64-37. Reagan Henry will bring it across the midcourt line. Reagan with the dribble against Kunkel. Goes high post to Franson. Haley turns and looks. Now fronts it, gets it left to Libby, pressured outside by Prockish. Five count is on, now picks it up, now has it taken away. Ball loose, and a foul called against Libby with 36 seconds now left on the game clock. 64-37, Clay Center leading. Again, on their way to a 1-0 start. They will be hosting for the first time this year basketball action Tuesday night when they bring in the Beloit Trojans this coming Tuesday. That will be from the den. Prakish at the line now has 11 points in the game as she knocks down another charity. 
She is just six of ten from the stripe. And it's both free throws. She has 12. 34 seconds remaining. Dayton Crimmins in the backcourt. Off to Reagan Henry. Henry crosses over. Now brings it through the timeline. Backs it out between the circles. 25 to work. Henry just letting clock wind down. Down to 20 seconds. Now she kicks it left on the sideline to Maddie Craig. Ball of overhead. Puts the dribble down. Breaks the five count. Now help from Reagan Henry. Back outside with 10. Play center very content to wind this baby down with eight seconds left. And on their way to a 1-0 and start. Three, two, Reagan Henry will just hold on to the basketball. And that will be it. Buzzer sounds. Lady Tigers win it 64-39. to Stay with us. Our post game coming up next. Sure, it's the season of peace on earth. But sometimes it seems like you're cooking for every person on earth. Parties, dinners, potlucks. It doesn't stop. Subway Catering is the miracle your holiday season needs. Order online and get sandwich platters, cookie trays, or even giant subs ready when you need them. Get Subway Catering and get time to enjoy the holidays, not spend them in the kitchen. Please allow 24 hours notice for giant sub orders. Place your order now for next spring's crops and save a bundle. Count on Crop Production Services of Clay Center for the best quality corn and soybean seed. Their proven brands include DeKalb, Asgro, Dynagro, Producers Hybrids, and LG. If you order now, you can take advantage of early cash and volume discounts, and they also have financing available. The agronomists at CPS stay current on the ever-changing field of seed technology, so they can provide well-informed advice to help increase your productivity. Spend a part of your afternoon at Union State Bank and help them ring in the Christmas season. It's time once again for their Christmas open house, and they welcome you to join them on Wednesday, December 6th from noon until 3. Enjoy refreshments and door prizes as you visit with friends and neighbors and share in the festive holiday cheer. Mark your calendars for Wednesday, December 6th from 12 until 3 o'clock at Union State Bank. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. As a third-generation seed company, Oldie Seed has pioneered the development of soil-specific hybrids that thrive in your soils. Our Know-to-Grow research program is the largest in the Midwest and utilizes advanced technologies including Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link soybeans. Oldie's research program delivers top yields while helping you win the war on resistant weeds. This season, don't settle for anything less than a soil-specific seed from Oldie Seed. Back once again at Rock Creek, Clay Center Tiger boys getting set to work. The Lady Tigers did work already, 64-39 after leading by 10 at the end of one quarter. Nine at halftime, they pulled away with a 24-point outburst in the third as the Lady Tigers get the win in a 64-39 final. And uh, Wonk, they cleaned some things up there in the third quarter, 24 third quarter points. Just yeah, out. I think they were probably a little disappointed with their production on offense for the first half, so... They came out, stepped it up. They they were behind by rebounding, but they finished the game uh, winning the rebound battle 33-30. to 30. 27 out of 39 from the free throw line. That was pretty impressive. And, uh, 18 out of 42, just under 50% from the field. So uh, a good game by the late Tigers. They only turned it over eight times. Coach would take that any game. They made Rock Creek turn it over 17. Wow. So, uh, and, you know, uh, it's going to be fun to watch this team all. You know, the sophomores and freshmen had a great game. Clara, what you have, 23? 24 in a long game. 24, yeah. and I called it a freshman record for the Lady Tigers. So <laughs> we'll yeah. see if that's right or not. But that was a, a, a good fastball game. And I think the Lady Tigers, you know, a little rough team the first half, but they came out, took care of it. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a great, great uh, third quarter that just separated the game, and you kind of knew then it was, it was going to be over. 64-39 is your final. I'm going to take another time out. We'll come back to give you the leading scores and wrap up on post game, which is being brought to you this evening by Edward Jones Investment, Terry Spielman, financial advisor. Here's a tech tip from Blue Valley Telecommunications. Do you know what bandwidth is or megabytes? 
Bandwidth is the amount of information your internet connection can move. It's described in megabytes or megs. How much bandwidth you need depends upon how many devices you have and what you're going to use your internet for. Your bandwidth speed is split when it enters into your house. If you have only a 5 meg connection with 5 users, each user could end up getting only 1 meg, which can cause things to load really slowly. If you have questions about your speed, give us a call. 877-876-1228. Nothing says fall like jackets, tailgating, and football. But fall also means the invasion of insects and rodents into your home to escape the cooler weather. We at RW Pest Control pride ourselves on being locally owned and operated. We always offer free on-site estimates and will never charge you mileage. Our priority is protecting your home or business against the threat of unwanted pests and rodents. We know you'll be happy with our service, and you may even be surprised by how much we can save. Call us today or visit us online at rwpestcontrol.com. Getting back on post game, being brought to you tonight by Edward Jones Investment, Kerry Spielman, financial advisor. They place the Lady Tigers 64 39 over Rock Creek to start the season at 1 and 0. Oh. The uh, Rock Creek Mustangs were led by Megan Prockish. She had 12 points in the game, 7 each for Tabitha Vetter and Laney Scott, 5 for Demi Kunkel, 3 from Allie Jensen, 4 for Abby Reuter, 2 from Madison Biggie. Lady Tigers, I mean, it was a standout performance from the freshman. Clara Edwards, her first varsity experience, goes for 24 points in this ball game, and I did not add up her free throws. She was 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 of 18. No, 12 of, yeah, 12 of 18 I ever for at the free throw line alone. 24 points. The freshman, Clara Edwards, phenomenal performance. 10 points from Sid Calloway, the senior. She was 6 of 6 at the line. Addie Mullen had nine. Six each from Hannah Ferguson. Battled foul trouble all night. Six also from Lexi Leiby. A three-pointer from Reagan Henry and Aaron Hamill. And one free throw from Maddie Craig and Jaden Crimmins. And the Lady Tigers win it 64-39. to Here's your final correction. Crimmins with two free throws. Craig with the one. But uh, just great balance and performance across the board. The Lady Tigers 64-39 winners. Stay with us. Tiger boys basketball is on the way. We'll get a chance to talk with head coach Drew Gruber on pregame coming up in a moment. <laughs> 